Okay, hello and welcome to video number four of Diaries of a Coronavirologist, which now has a nice new YouTube banner courtesy of my friend Richard, so thank you for that. It's the 19th of March and we are now up to a little bit under 243,000 cases and just under 10,000 deaths, so we're about to hit a new milestone there. As I said in my last video, the responses to this channel have been fantastic and I've been quite overwhelmed by it all, so thank you everyone. Please keep posting comments and questions because they've been great. Everyone is asking really smart questions and it's all things I intend to get to eventually, just it's going to take me a bit of time. I am going to try and put out more videos than I uh, was initially planning to just so I can try and tackle everything. But the best thing to do is subscribe so that you get the updates when I put up new videos. As another little note, uh, if anyone wants to look at the more academic aspects of the things that I'm doing, my boss and I had an article that was published in the journal M-Sphere uh, yesterday, I think. We wrote it about two weeks ago, so some of it may be slightly out of date, especially the case counts and the number of countries this virus has gone to. But we tried to set it up as here's 10 questions that we want answers to or that are going to be the source of research and the future so hopefully some of it is timeless I'll put a link down to that in the description of this video if anyone wants to have a look at it because it is open access Hemisphere is a good journal for that so you can have a little read of the stuff uh, have a little read of my writing versus just listening to me talk if you're interested so today's topic is going to be about antiviral therapeutics I will eventually get to vaccines as well but as many people may be aware vaccines probably won't be widely available for at the very least a year more likely around 18 months to two years so i've got a bit more time before i want to tackle those a better approach right now is to find antivirals and to trial out the potentials we have and to potentially look at drug repurposing so i've therefore planned out two videos which i'm hoping will come today and tomorrow the first one is this one which is going to be talking about remdesivir Tomorrow's video will talk about drug repurposing, uh, which obviously I'll get into tomorrow. Now, as I said in my video yesterday, for those who've been following sequentially, I've worked out I can stitch videos together fairly quickly and easily. So this allows me to have save points, let's say, where I can come back to when I, I like what I've said before I go too far and dislike the way I've said something or I've forgotten what I was planning to say. It does mean there'll be a couple of awkward cuts like the one that's about to happen. So before we get into remdesivir in detail, I just want to make a general comment about this channel. I'm really trying to approach this as the scientist I am. So I'm looking at data and I'm assessing whether it's good science and whether the studies have been performed properly and whether things are peer reviewed. And I'm only going to really focus on the good stuff, let's say. There's a lot of fake news out there, obviously, for this thing cured my covid disease or this thing made it worse i don't want to try and tackle all of that because if i did i'd never talk about anything else i want to talk about the stuff that i think is worthwhile talking about and to that end today i want to talk about remdesivir so remdesivir is a drug that was produced by gilead sciences and it's in the lab shown broad spectrum antiviral activity which is fantastic because we don't have a broad spectrum antiviral so if you think of antibiotics, for example, a single antibiotic, take penicillin, can be used as treatment for a lot of different bacterial infections. We have nothing like that for viruses right now. Every drug we have available for a virus is specific to that virus. So the potential for a broad spectrum antiviral is great. We need something like that. So as I say, in the lab, uh, remdesivir has been shown to inhibit a lot of different viruses. It has been used in people during the Ebola uh, epidemics we've seen, and unfortunately it didn't show particularly great results for treatment of Ebola. <coughs> Excuse me. But in the lab, a lot of great research has been done to demonstrate that coronaviruses are very sensitive to remdesivir. So work in cells or mice or monkeys, really good research has shown that SARS coronavirus 1, the, uh, the first one, and MERS coronavirus are sensitive to remdesivir. And therefore there's potential that SARS-2 might also be sensitive. 
Remdesivir is now entering phase three clinical trials in America. So because it's already been used in people for the Ebola outbreak, even though it wasn't particularly effective for treatment of that disease, we know it's pretty safe. We know it's not causing many adverse effects, which can really give us that impetus to move forward and test it in COVID-19 patients. Excuse the cut, I lost my train of thought. I was saying, obviously to you it was seconds ago, for me it was a little bit longer, that remdesivir is being used in phase three trials here in America and in China it's also being used in some serious trials for patients suffering from COVID-19. Right now it's too early to know whether it's being beneficial because we're just developing this data, but fingers crossed it will be. Now, while I can't really talk about the data about whether it's actually beneficial for patients, I'd like to just explain how it works. So RNA viruses, such as coronaviruses and Ebola, need to replicate their genome. This is how they make more copies of the virus and how they spread infection and how they infect new people by copying their genome. Because they're RNA viruses, they need to have a protein which is called the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, the RDRP. I'll try not to abbreviate it too much, but I may slip into that by mistake every now and then. So the RDRP, that was deliberate, is an enzyme that the virus produces that our cells don't really have. So it's a very good drug target because you're targeting something really specific to the virus. So the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase copies the viral genome. It does this by stitching together nucleotides of the genome. So if you think of DNA, I'm sure everyone is aware that DNA is made up of A, T's, G's and C's. RNA is made up of A, U, G and C, so it's a U instead of a T. But it stitches these together to make up the genetic code of the virus. The way remdesivir works is it mimics an A. So it looks just like a normal adenosine, but it can't then be linked to further. So normally if you take one of the nucleotides and you get the next one, they can stitch together and you can produce more copies of the viral genome. Remdesivir looks more like a fist in this example, where you try and keep copying the viral genome and you can't. So if no viral genomes can be made, no new virus particles can be made and you inhibit replication of the virus. And this is how remdesivir works. So we're still waiting to see whether it's truly beneficial in patients. The big hope is it is. This is our furthest along in development for new chemicals that might be, able to, uh, that might be beneficial for treatment of COVID-19. There's another chemical I just want to mention. I'm having to scroll through my little notes that I've got up on the screen, just slightly cheat sheet, uh, which has hit the news this week and some people may have heard of, which is Avagan. Uh, I'm going to definitely stumble over the chemical name, which is Favipiravir. So this is the same principle. This is a drug that's used in Ch uh, Japan for treatment of influenza, and it works in the same way. It inhibits the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase of influenza by blocking production of new viral genomes. And there are reports coming out of China that it's beneficial for treating COVID-19. I don't think those have actually been published. I think it's just press releases. Uh, so right now it's a little bit too early to say, but I thought I'd mention it just because it's the same principle we're talking about. So that's remdesivir. Some fantastic research has gone into showing that remdesivir may be beneficial for the treatment of coronaviruses and it's the furthest along for a potential new drug that can be used and it's in phase three trials. So with such a growing number of cases, which is obviously terrible, we are actually gonna be able to get data to see if this can have a benefit and fingers crossed it will. Remdesivir is also being used in combination with another drug called chloroquine and I'm gonna talk about that a lot more in tomorrow's video because that comes into the concept of drug repurposing, which I'd like to introduce everyone to but I've already gone quite long in this video. Hopefully people don't mind that they're a bit longer than I was thinking, um, but hopefully the information here is useful and or at least interesting. So please keep commenting, let me know what's good, what's bad, and keep subscribing. Uh, I'm gonna try and upload a lot more videos than I thought I was going to. And with that, I'll sign off for the night and go have some dinner. Thanks for watching.